Hi guys. Um, I hope you're doing well today. Um, or this evening or tonight, whatever you're watching this, from wherever you're watching. I so appreciate all your support and all your comments and all your love towards me. It's so awesome. Um, today's sermon, not really a sermon, well, it's going to be like a twist on two very popular secular songs. I'm going to try and sing snippets of the songs um, um, and then explain why I chose them um, and kind of change some of the words a bit. I hope YouTube lets me do this. Um, if they don't, I'll figure out another way to get um, to get this video up. Um, they should since I'm singing them in there and they're like uh, covers. Although I'm going to change some of the words to fit what I have to say. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do and what you are doing in our lives and around the world, God, I, I pray that you'll permit, that you'll use me to, um, to bring your, your spirit, your love, your general, gentleness, your care to people all around the world. All I endeavor to do, God, in all my, um, in all my thoughts and blood self is to give you bring you glory through these little sermons, God. I thank you for the lives that you will bless, that you are a blessing, and that you will be blessing through this sermon. In the name of Jesus, amen. High being behind the cross, that Rachel die, and Christ spirit, Christ spirit live in me. In the name of Jesus, amen. This sermon is called uh, the Gospel According to Whitney and Brittany. Uh, clever title, <laughs> um, if I do say so myself. Anyway, um, anyone who knows me and who has seen my videos for the last eight years that I've been doing them knows that I love music. And my favorite thing to do is flip secular music and um, give it kind of take the words and um, kind of use them for the kingdom. I've done this in quite a few of my videos, quite a few of my earlier videos. In fact, the only reason I stopped is because of YouTube rules now. You, you can't play pre-recorded music because of monetization and blah 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 um, but I still do it from time to time and and today I'm going to attempt to do something uh, really cool now I'm I'm not the best singer in the world so I'll say that up front um, but I still love music and because I can't play the songs um, because of YouTube rules, like I said, um, I'm just going to have to, um, sing my version, version of them. Or I might sing the originals and then my version. We'll see how this goes. Um. Oh. Um, so... My first song I'm going to attempt to flip on its head is one of Britney Spears' early songs called Sometimes. And her version goes like this. They tell me you're in love with me. That you can't take your pretty eyes away from me. It's not that I don't want to stay. 
But every time you come too close, I move away. I wanna believe in everything that you say. Cause it sounds so good. But if you really want me, move slow. There's things about me you just have to know. Sometimes I run. Sometimes I hide. Sometimes I'm scared of you. But all I really want is to hold you tight. Treat you right. Be with you day and night. Day, all I need is time. I don't want to be so shy. Uh oh. Every time when I'm alone, I wonder why. Hope that you will wait for me. You see that you're the only one for me. I want to believe in everything that you say. Cause it sounds so good. But if you really want me, move slow. There's things about me you just have to know. Sometimes I run. Sometimes I hide. Sometimes I'm scared of you. But all I really want is to hold you tight. Treat you right, be with you day and night. Baby, all I need is time. Just hang around and you'll see there's somewhere I'd rather be. If you love me, trust in me. The way that I trust in you. Sometimes I learn. Sometimes I hide, sometimes I'm scared of you, but all I really want is to hold you tight, treat you right, be with you day and night, baby, all I need is time. Okay, um, he gave me that one, not because, um... Of, of a really trans um, of a changing of words not for that one at least but he said that some of you um, think that kind of God loving you is kind of too good to be true and because you've done so much in your past you're running from him because you think all the things that you've heard in church about his love and his grace and whatever is too good for you and you kind of run and hide because you don't think you're deserving and i just want to tell you right now you are deserving of his love and his grace and his forgiveness and his and his peace you are deserving there is nothing that you that you've done or nothing that you will do that will make you undeserving um people often talk about the wrath of god and although in the old testament there was a lot of talk about the wrath of god um they said um, the Bible says the old law was the teacher until the new law came. So now that the new law came and the new, the law was fulfilled by Jesus, by Jesus' death on the cross. So all that old, old law business, it's not over with, but it's kind of overshadowed I believe by Jesus's coming so whatever you've done whatever you will do it, he not only does he know about it but he has already covered you uh, 
from and he's already put people around you to um, help you with it and um, quite often God's wrath what we call God's wrath is usually the consequences of our own decisions so usually when you sin or do something that he he um he not frowns on but he it kind of that kind of is below the level that you're supposed to be living he will he will not punish you uh, as in punish you I'm as in like punishment he'll just let you live with the consequences of what you what you've done or what you've thought or what you've you know contemplated so the punishment that God usually does of is basically he doesn't dole out anything he just lets us live and grow through the consequences of our actions and that actually makes us better people in the long run because it helps us grow and change into the people that um, he wants us to be and I think that um, this whole thing about God is waiting to punish you so so we have to run and hide we can't do this we can't do that because um, God is going to punish us and his wrath is going to kill us is not right I think like I said before the way that he corrects us not punish corrects us is through our consequences consequences are the greatest teacher um, because when you have to live with your own consequences you understand that there are that there are um, that you can you can do whatever you want you can have whatever actions you want but be aware that there are consequences to your actions there are things that come out of it and I think that's the real punishment just living with the own, with your own consequences and not just living with them learning from them and learning to forgive yourself I was talking to this gentleman um, who lives in my apartment building and I was talking to him he was like I'm not sure I could even go to church because um, the things I did that I w when I was young and and whatever happened and I, I, and I said to him it doesn't matter what you did when you were young it doesn't matter what you think you did wrong he still loves you and you are not and his love is fierce for you and his love is like a father's love it, it's very ba balanced um, what I mean by balance is that he corrects you when he needs to lovingly and he cheers you on when he needs to and when he corrects you it's so loving and it so fits your personality he knows how to correct you and he's not going to correct you in a way that will scar you he's going to correct you in a way that will teach you he said open correction is better than secret love and what kind of father would he be if he didn't correct you because he knows the purpose he has for his, your life and he knows the the state that he wants your life to go in so all these things that you think are 
oh no, disqualifiers, they're actually being used as setups for God's purpose, and you will eventually get there. Even though you might have taken some detours, um, you may, may, might have made some bad decisions, um, those bad decisions will still end you up in God's ultimate purpose for your life. And don't be surprised if your purpose looks totally different than what you originally thought. Because God's way is not our way and his thoughts are not our thoughts. So that's the first, first one. Um, the second song is Run To You by Whitney Houston. Now this one is going to be my own version um, of Run To You. It goes like this. I know when you look at me there's nothing that you just don't see and you Lord you always take the time I know in my heart you find oh a girl who's scared sometimes who isn't always strong and you see the hurt in me and I never alone. Jesus, I run to you. Ooh. Jesus, I run to you. Ooh. Let you hold me in your arms and keep me safe from harm. Jesus, I run. To you, Ooh. and when I come to you, Ooh. you always stay and never run away. Jesus, I run to you. you hold me in your arms and keep me safe from harm. Jesus, I run to you. to Jesus and we always say that but I don't think we know how to do that I think we've got this churchy mentality of running to Jesus means a lot of big worded prayers and all that stuff it doesn't mean that it means you can you can run to him you can go to him 
with your simple worded prayer, you could e e I even, you know, I uh, full disclosure, full disclosure, I even use some colorful language in my prayers. I'll just keep it there. Prayer is just basically communication with God, and sometimes. You don't have to come with, oh, Lord, my father, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes, Lord, help is a decent prayer. And that's what we're lacking. We're, we're, I think the church is lacking the ability to just run to the Lord. And we've, we've made it so hard with all our churchy, um, uh, things that we put um, on people whereas basically they can just come by themselves and say uh, Lord I'm really having a hard time with this or Lord I'm feeling this way or Lord like Lord whatever you can talk to him like um, like um, a friend and and a lot of people, um, I've, I've heard people say that, that you can't approach God like that. He is God and he deserves respect. And yes, he is. But a lot of, and he also, but he also takes you where you are. So if that's how you start, that's fine. If... Uh, he knows your heart and he knows the starting place. So if you start with Lord, help me and just start talking, that's communication, that's prayer. And if you want to start there and he'll build you and he'll build you and he'll build you until he gets you to the place in prayer that he wants you to you to be, but you've got to start somewhere, and he might not take you to that place in prayer that you're talking in tongues and using all these big words. It takes, it takes time, and it takes a relationship to be able to do that, and that might not be his plan for you. He just wants you to come to, to him as you, and he knows where you're at. So that person might think it's disrespectful to come to God like, uh, yo, God, this and that. But if that's who you are and that's where you are at this moment, so be it. If, if that's how you talk, that's how you talk. And respect is not in what you say. It's in what you do and the posture of your heart. I've heard, I've heard people that can pray up a storm, they can speak in tongues like crazy, but they have no respect for God. They have no respect for people. Like they just go out of church and act anyhow and just, just, um, it's a mask to them. It's a game that they need to play um, in, their, in their minds. But church is not, I shouldn't say church is not, not, church is not a game, but what is definitely not a game is your relationship with Christ. Your relationship with Christ is very serious. His love for you is very, um, is very real. And it's the realest thing in your life if you would just embrace it and run to him and and after you do that he will set up the pro proper people in your life and it won't be always hunky dory but when it comes but when it isn't hunky dory the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian is when your life isn't hunky dory because it often gets worse after become, becoming a Christian, but when your life isn't hungry, Dory, you have Jesus in your corner to love you and take care of you. 
and he will take care of you through every storm, through everything in your life, even though at the time it may, it may not seem a lot better, it will, it will at the end of the day seem a whole lot different than it is right now. And he just wants to tell you, daughter, son, you can run to me. You don't have to carry this all alone. You don't have to carry your mother's illness alone. I created her. I know that she's going through cancer. You don't have to deal with that wayward child alone. I know what they're going through. Let me handle it. You don't have to do all those errands alone. Let me send some, let me put somebody in your life to help you handle it. And sometimes I know with me, um, I just want to be so independent, but sometimes he wants even me to just know that I can rely on people. And he sent some really good people into my life. Um, and for most people, he sent some really good people into our lives. We, we just need to be um, willing to let them in and let them help uh, with uh, what we need. Um, so that's it for this weekend. I pray that you guys have a wonderful week and I pray that God does some wonderful things in your life this week and I hope you learn something this week. God bless you. Jesus, I run to you. Jesus, I run to you. Ooh, let you hold me in your arms and keep me safe from harm. Jesus, I run to you. Jesus, I run to you. Ooh, tell me, will you stay or will you run away? No. <laughs> well. You will stay and never run away. Sorry, I was confusing the actual version with my version, so I fixed it at the end. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.